All right, everyone, what's up? It is your boy BQ. Welcome back to the Negative BQ YouTube channel. I'm talking Maple Leaf Pro Forge and Excellence Night 2 here. I know that it's, um, I think the event might have been six, seven weeks ago. So we're really, really we're behind here. But people did want me to give my thoughts on the show. I'm actually kind of wish I didn't commit to it because we're talking like six hours of wrestling here. This is damn near like trying to watch WrestleMania. And I said this the, the first time around. This was a very difficult watch for me. This was not wrestling that just it like I did not fly through through three hours on either of these nights. I thought it was a uh, very hard to consume. And, you know. I probably said this too. This was I, I take that when I'm when I'm watching this, I take it as this is Scott Nemore's vision for what TNA was going to be under him. And. If that was the case, I wouldn't have had any interest. Um, I don't plan on watch these, watching these going forward. If they they put these um, events out again, I I don't think I'd have interest. I think I said last time around that if they they did like maybe a one hour TV show and it was available on a streaming app, I might give it a shot. But as far as these these long pay per view type events, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't spend the money on it again going forward personally. A lot of people messaged me and said, "Hey, you're gonna love Maple Leaf Pro." And they did have some redeeming qualities. Uh, don't get me wrong, but for me, it was too much of what I kind of didn't like about T and Air. What I didn't like about Impact under Scott, you know, first of all, the the graphics are completely drenched in red, and I talked about that a lot reviewing Impact over the years. You know, red is meant to be an accent color. It's not really supposed to be dominant, um, and it's just red, 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 red font on top of a red background. Like that's when you know Scott Nemours involved because he's obsessed with red, and um, like if you looked at the match graphics, it would have the two pictures and there's Forge and Excellence in bright red over a red background. Look absolutely awful. Uh, no color contrasting at all, and there was like a really really weird graphic that it was like Raj Desi and Bupinder Gujar against whoever they were fighting. It was like Bully Ray and QG Marshall maybe. I don't remember. Um, but Raj Desi was behind Bupinder in the graphic, but his graphic was also much, much bigger than Bupinder's. Because, you know, obviously when you're standing behind someone, you're supposed to appear to be smaller than them. So the, just the way everything was layered and everything, I just thought was pretty was pretty cheap. So I had no interest in... Uh, I just have no interest in this going forward. I'm not going to lie to you. And... um We'll still go through these matches, and maybe some of you are hearing me say this, and you're like, I don't want to hear what you have to say now. You already said that you're not going to watch it again, but um, we're still going to run through these matches for those who want to hear my thoughts on it. So um, the first match of this thing was the QPW Qatar Championship match, and the champion was Classy, Classy Ali. I've never heard of him before. He took on El Reverso. El Reverso is over in that area. He's a little bit of a comedy character, um, but he, he does he, he's pretty he's pretty fun to watch. And the match was was pretty good. I you know the commentary team kept saying, "Oh well, if El Reverso wins, does he have to take this championship to Qatar?" So right there, you think, "Okay, Classy Ali's going to win." No, El Reverso wins this thing. So it, it kind of reminded me of, you know. There was a period in AEW. I don't know if they still do it, but there was a period when I was watching that they would just bring in these random titles and random champions, and you're just like, who who the hell is this, you know? And that's kind of what I thought this felt like. And uh, what, what do we have to have after this? One sec. Looks like I actually got, I got a little confused on you here, which I, I tend to do. When I'm uh, reviewing everything, anything, I always get something out of order. No, it actually that wasn't actually the first match. The first match was the Jet Setters and Aiden Prince against Rocky Romero, Rohit Raju, and Rohan Raja. I very much pissed off Rohan Raja one time to the point that he DM'd me because I I made some kind of comment about his name sounding like a knockoff of Rohit Raju. Yeah, I mean they're so similar, and he was uh, very offended by that, <laughs> and he. He asked me very respectfully to apologize. <laughs> um, so, yeah, th this was a cool actually actually opening match. I mean, Aiden Prince is getting some run. Aiden Prince is really good, but he's he's getting some run here because he was supposed to be part of Impact. 
and he got injured. And, you know, he had a couple matches. I mean, they still got him on the roster page, but he just never really did a whole lot. And I thought he actually retired from wrestling. I, I could have swore because um, we're Facebook friends. I was, he said he was retiring just due to injuries or whatever. Um, but I, I think I've pointed this out on these podcasts before. I know I've, I've said it in conversation with people, if Rocky Romero is involved in a match, like that will be the losing team. I've never seen this guy win a match. Could not tell you his finisher. Could barely tell you his moveset because this dude does not win. If he's involved in a match or he's on a team, like that team will lose. That is a 100% guarantee. So yeah, Jet Setters and Aiden Prince win. That was a good way to, to kick off the night. After that was El Reverso versus Clap. I got that a little bit out of order. Then there was some backstage stuff about Rohan Raja being angry that it, his team was lost. He wasn't the one that got pinned, so he's going to defend his PWA Champions Grail at Ocean Pro Wrestling Show in December. Enjoy that. Um, Kylie Ray and Mew, Yamash, excuse me, Mew Yamashita took on Lady uh, Lainey Luck and Harley Cameron. Mara Ranallo kept trying to throw in Lady Luck puns. You, you're not original, dude. Uh, that's clearly kind of where she got the name from. So, you know, trying to trying to throw in these puns about Lady Luck on your side. Like, okay. If, if we ever see this girl on TV, whatever, whatever company it is, you can expect the commentary team to just throw Lady Luck puns out constantly. I can see that coming. We knew that Kylie Ray and Miu Yamashita were going to win. You, you didn't have to uh, watch the match to know that. And they did defeat Laney Luck and Harley Cameron. And this was a playoff the night before where Laney Luck, I think, kind of turned heel on Kylie Ray a little bit. And Harley Cameron was acting like a huge star in the show, the huge star that she thinks she is. Then uh, Mike Rollins defeated Trevor Lee, Jake Something, Stu Grayson, Alex Zane, and Sheldon Jean. So a bunch of guys that I have that I have heard from before, or, Excuse me. That a bunch of guys that I have heard of before lost somebody lost to somebody that I've never heard of before. Uh, another thing I had said when I was talking about night one, Trevor Lee has. I mean, he has no aura about him whatsoever. This guy came off NXT television. I think he might have done one WWE match or something. People liked him in TNA. I thought he was really really overrated. He comes out and just no aura to him at all. He's just another. Another dude out there. And if this were Scott's TNA, I would totally see him trying to bring him in and probably put like the exhibition championship on him. You know, Jake something was in this match. I've been saying I'm kind of out on Jake something. He he comes out. He's generic. The the uh, ring announcing is generic. He's just someone I thought was capable of a lot more of more than what we get from him. And uh, Stu Grayson, excellent. Sheldon Jean, excellent. Alex Zane, excellent. I don't like the whole Taco Bell thing, but uh, Mike Rollins wins. Uh, so there was two matches on this card that I think if you watch this thing in person, you were really, really into. One of them being Mike Bailey and El Fantasmo. Mike Bailey won the match. Mike Bailey is incapable of putting on a good match. He's incapable of cutting a good promo as well, but he's incapable of a bad match. Everything he does uh, is very, very good, and it's not, it's it's relatively believable. You know, he's not doing; he's just really good. He's but he's not doing fake moves. You know, everything comes off pretty believ uh, believable. El Fantasmo's shitload of charisma. We saw him on Impact quite a bit with the Bullet Club. So this was this was really good. This was one of the high point high points of the show. So definitely, uh, definitely a good one, Mike Bailey. Got the win. And then there was a segment that I thought was really, really bad. It was an interview with Bully Ray and QT Marshall backstage. And Harley Cameron walks up and she starts yelling uh, catchphrases, Dudley Boy catchphrases. So I said this with the last reaction show as well. Harley Cameron is one of the hottest women in wrestling. Like, There's no doubt about it. Physically, almost flawless. She is one of the most annoying characters. And I don't think it's like a good annoying, like she's an annoying heel. Some people 
take her that way. Some people find her funny and they think she's just being an annoying heel. I just think she's annoying. I think she's a bad character on TV. I think she's very good in the ring. For for as little she's been in the business, she's way ahead of of most women in the ring. She's she's actually not bad at all, but just nonstop, you know, just trying to be funny, trying to be goofy, and it, it does not work for me. And this is for someone who considers himself a fan of hers. I just, I think that she, I didn't think she was that bad when she first started getting on television last year, but it's like as as time increases, she's going out of her way to be more and more annoying, and it it's not my favorite thing in the world. Uh, Raj Desi and Bupinder Gujar took on Bully Ray and QT Marshall. Darren McCarty got involved. I was very, very worried that we're going to throw him in the call your shot gauntlet uh, at Bound for Glory. And if Scott was running TNA, he would have been in the gauntlet. I'm not familiar with Darren McCarty. I, I, I know that they are there. I'm, I'm very casual as a hockey fan. I do watch a little bit of hockey, but I'm, I'm very, very casual. Raj Desi towers Bupinder Gujar. And it just kind of shows you WWE uses a lot of people, whether they're jobbers or not, that just really look like grown men. And they kind of leave the, the smaller wrestlers for everybody else. And, you know, Bupinder is someone that we see him on TV, great physique, you know, got a little bit of height to him. But you think he's a bigger dude, and then you just put him next to Raj Desi, and he just looks like some X Division guy. And then Bully Ray and QT Marshall. I, I, I think QT Marshall is pretty entertaining. I think he's pretty good in the ring. There was a, a segment where Bully Ray had Bupinder's legs, and he had Harley Cameron climb to the top rope to do the, the what's up headbutt. And Bupinder rolled through it, and Raj Desi pushed Harley Cameron off the ropes, and she headbutted. Bully Ray. And maybe that was a fun spot for the people involved, but I thought that looked like phony wrestling personally. Raj Desi and Bupinder win this thing. Very obvious that they were going to. One match that was really excellent was the women's ROH World Championship match, Athena versus Giselle Shaw. Now, I spent the majority of this match thinking, man, this is a really, really good match. I kept thinking in my head, I wish Impact did so much more with Giselle Shaw. And I think maybe they just didn't because she was dating Scott no more. But I mean, no one even knew they were dating for the longest time. So I kind of, I don't understand why they did that. But, you know, I, I do miss seeing Giselle, Giselle Shaw on Impact. I always enjoyed her matches. I enjoyed her character. She lost a whole lot. I mean, everybody beat her. And she lost here as well. My only concern with this match is that it would not end. Uh, it got to the point where I, I fast forwarded about five minutes and I, and it still wasn't over. And I'm just like, good God. But it was really, really good. But the issue I have with long wrestling matches is that there's only two way that, ways that a match is going to end. A roll-up or a finisher. That's it. Now, yeah, there's a disqualification here and there, whatever. But pretty much, when you're watching a match, those are the two ways it's going to end. And when I'm watching something like this, I said, okay, Athena, her championship's on the line, so she's not going to lose. So why are we wrestling so long? Everyone knows she's not going to lose. They're just going at it, going at it, going at it. I'm kind of like, okay, just hit your finisher and wrap this up. So I, you know, I, I spent the good first half of the match really, really enjoying it, and then I just felt like it wasn't going to end. And there was a part where they kind of hit German suplexes on each other, and they both no, no sold them. Athena did a a straight jacket Canadian backbreaker that I shot, I thought should have been the finish of the match. You know, once when I'm watching a long match and once I start telling myself that should have been the finish, that should have been the finish, that should have been the finish. Then I start getting taken out of it because now at this point you're just doing you, there's no storytelling. You're just doing a bunch of moves until someone loses. So Athena won. We knew she was going to win. She's been the champion forever. Uh, and I think she is going to be the champion forever. And then the main event of this thing was was another one really, really good. If you were in the house for this, this was definitely worth the price of admission. Kanosuke Takeshita versus Josh Alexander. Uh, Takeshita won the match. Takeshita is really, really good. He's got some size to him as well. 
you know, Josh Alexander, much like I say with Speedball Mike Bailey, incapable of a bad match. Everything he does is is uh, top notch in the ring. Everything he does is four or five star. You know, he's just to use a Dave Meltzer reference. I would have I would have preferred that the AW International Championship wasn't on the line here. Because once you put that on the line, now it's like, okay, Takeshita is going to win. You just know that that is going to happen. So much like I said with the previous match, really, really, really good. And then kind of gets to the point where it's like, okay, this isn't going to end. Please go ahead and just hit your finisher and win this thing. I'm okay with a long match if you legitimately do not know who's going to win. And you're legitimately selling us with the near falls. But this was a little AEW, AEW-ish for me where it's just a bunch of moves until someone hits a move that wins. And that's kind of what happened. And at the end, Ricochet came out to save Josh Alexander. I don't really know why, because I don't even think that is tied into AEW television. I th- he, he might. I don't think Ricochet's feuding with the Don Callis family, though. So they were just trying to get a, a, a pop. Ricochet, it, it fell out of nowhere. He had nothing to do with this. Nothing to do with this whole entire event. So that's going to do it for me. This is not my best review, obviously. Hard time getting through this. Uh, will not be reviewing or probably watching these shows again going forward, but I at least wanted to give it an opportunity. And you know, hopefully this is a successful venture for Scott Demore. But whether it is or whether it's not, we will not be talking about it here. I'm your boy, BQ. I'm out. Peace.